This time we're going to fit a seal kit, a service kit to a Myra 88. This also covers the Myra 8 as well. They're very similar in construction. I'll point out the couple of differences as we go. So here we are, Myra 88. Uh, first thing to do is to just whip the knobs off. There's a slot under here to get a screwdriver in to leave off the temperature knob and the a horseshoe clip here that holds the main knob on. That's that off. Um, and so the, also but probably what you should do if it's a concealed one like this that you have, there's this cover plate that comes off, it just really pulls forwards and snaps off, and then there's this, the plate that holds this in position. Um, behind it here, and so you really need to have this off as well. And that comes off, and that allows you to get into the main knob, which should just pull forward, although some of these can be very tight. The trick here is if it's very tight, cut the kettle holes of boiling hot water on it, it might just expand the plastic enough to allow you to pull it off fairly easily. Either that, or you can get some of cut the screwdrivers in to lever it forward. However, that's not enough, it wasn't too difficult. We're now faced with this large nut. Now, you're going to need something fairly heavy to get this nut off. The, um, if, it's, if it's tight, once again, this is another time to use a couple of kettlefuls of boiling hot water over it. It might expand the brass just enough. The other thing to do is to go around it with a hammer and give it some sharp taps all the way around. But this is uh, mounted to a fairly flimsy wall, so we, you know, it needs a good, good tap. Now the only difference between the 8 and the 88, the 88 is that the 8 has a very small nut here and it's quite difficult to get to. So you'll need something like that to get into the 88, to get into the 8. However, this is the 88 here, and so it's really just a case of unslacking this, this nut. So this is the cover plate, and here's the main workings of the shower in here. Um, and so this is really it. This is the part that changes from hot to cold, the water that's inside. And this is the hot and cold ports that fit here, and these move back and forward, and that's what uh, allows the hot and cold water through. So what we'll do is we'll strip these components down now. Spring. Um, this is a part that actually throws the halter here back and forward. And then these two come out like this. Now these can be made of brass or plastic. It really doesn't matter if it's plastic, you've got to be very careful when you're putting them back in. So now we'll lay the parts out and we'll get the seals ready to fit. Okay, so I might have supplied this piece of paper and it's, what it's got on is a copy of all of the, the seals. You can see some of them are very close in size, so what we need to do now is to match these seals up onto the correct place in the piece of paper. The seals are all letter-coded, and the codes follow the actual components. So the components, um, what we need to do is just match the, the, the actual O-ring to the component, and that's how we rebuild it. But the first job is to, um, is to put all the parts on the paper and match them. So now what we'll do is start to rebuild this. Um, what we'll do is do the, the hot and cold pistons first. What you need is something with a point on it to get the old seals off, just to dig them in and peel them out. Um, something sharp that can either poke into them or can get behind the seals. These two are the smallest ones and so they can be quite difficult to get out. Like this. There we go. That's it. And so um, I don't know how easy it is to see, but this is the pistons here, and what they need is seal D, um, and this is seal. D, these are seal D here. So there we go. Pop that on there. That's one. And 
дело. two uh, pistons fit onto this halter and for that we need the horseshoe clips that I mentioned earlier. These just go in like that. There's nothing to hold them in place other than friction and the um, piston just pushes in like that and the cutout should point towards the inside. That's the halter reassembled. And now the parts for the temperature control. Seal here. And this is seal, um, where are we now? seal K, which is this one here. If you've watched any of these videos before, you'll know that I do not like Myra Grease. So we'll use our own, our own shower, our own shower doctor grease. So what we need is a bit of silicon grease based here. And this is the part that, um, that makes sure you can't overturn it between the hot and cold. And that slips on down here like that. And there's a stop on this, so we need a bit of grease on top of this now as well. And then the um, the, uh, the fibre washer and the steel washer. Then the spring and then the uh, a bit sil a bit of silicon round the uh, round the uh, round the o ring here. Sorry, and then the steel washer and then the fibre washer. So the steel washers go against the spring, and the fibre washers bear against the um, the next piece of brass. That's that. That's that part ready. And uh, this part, this part um, was a washer to go here. This is washer G that goes on there. I know that one by heart. This brass bush, this is the part that throws the the halter with the pistons back and forward. This was well greased. They supply this. They didn't always supply this, but they supply this now because that's a part that wears. And that fits in the halter here. I'll give the threads a grease inside as well. And so that goes together. Like this. Or it should go together like this. I think just the part's been new. If the handle becomes sticky, there we go. If your handle's sticky, it's often this part that's worn. So that's that fitted. And the temperature tone control goes up and through here. And that's that sub-assembly ready to be fitted into the shower. So now it's back to the shower. Okay, when we're getting to put the things back together, I've taken this te the temperature spindle back out again so you can see this part here and you see that the lug on that fits into this notch here. So the next thing to do is there's a thrust washer to go right in the back here. Um, I'll put some silicon around it, the silicon on the washer. One of the things to make sure of is that you don't leave the old one in because it won't go back together properly if there's two in there. And I'll just pop that back together. I just took it out so you could see what was going on. Properly underneath here. Yep, 
that's it in properly now. And you can see one of the things to check is that the pistons move freely back and forward when they're in place. As I said with the plastic pistons, if you get these wrong you can damage the pistons. The brass ones go in no problem, but that's us okay. I'll pop screw that in a wee bit. Um, and so now the next thing to do is to, to replace the seal on the cover plate, which is which was on our piece of paper. And so that goes in there, like that. And once again, some silicon on the threads to make it easier for the next person that's got to take it apart and a little bit around, a little bit around the seal. Now, one of the other things to remember is on the front here, there is a copper thrust washer. Now, it's very, very easy to forget this washer and leave the old one on. The old one often sits and sticks to the cover, um, but I've remembered to take the old one off. So there we go, that's the new one on. Silicon around here just to make sure that it all slips on rather nicely. And the next thing is ah, here we go. Is this plastic washer? It's got no real significance in terms of the, the overhaul, but it's this that stops the um, the on off knob waggling about, sort of thing. So um, it needs to be in place, so you can replace it, it needs to be in place. So now all we need to do is put the cover plate back on. Now What's happened, what happens with the cover plate is that the, um, the inside mechanism starts turning at the same time and so it doesn't screw fully back. So every so often, pop the handle back on and turn it back. And you'll see I can turn this a little further and then it'll jam again. And so turn that back a bit and then that's it. And that's it pretty much hand tight. And then on with the big pliers. Footprints, these are footprints, and tighten this up. That's it. It feels tight, but I'm just going to check that it's okay with the handle. Yeah, there's plenty of free movement in the handle. Let's get another check to make sure we've got it fully nipped up. Yep. And so now all it's a case of doing is popping the handles back on. And you can see that fits on nice and easily, and there's a lovely free movement in the valve. The valve feels good. The next thing is to put the horseshoe clip on to hold that handle in place. Things are slipping a little bit because my hands are a bit greasy with the silicon, but that's that one. And finally the temperature control knob. There we go. And so you can see now that, that this valve moves nice and freely. It's got a lovely action. It's a really satisfying job to do when you get this when you've done this because you can just feel that the valve's working correctly. So there we go, that's an 88 serviced.